I got a, a few ideas. Um, I worked with Jim, I don't know, 10 years ago? Something like that. The reason I know Jim is because we worked together and then I suggest, I found out he was lives close to me and we carpooled for 13 years and that's how I got to know him. Then he invited me to uh, like a Y and I joined the Y because of him and you know, um, Euchre and I do some of that. Um, but I know that uh, he really helps his employees. I've spoken not intentionally, but just uh, you know, in the halls to a number of people who had been working for him. And over the years, they uniformly say they just love working for Jim. He's a great guy. Um, before Ford, he was a boilermaker. A piece of trivia. Uh, you can see he's good at woodworking. Uh, he is good with his hands and uh, you know, fixing just about anything else as well. Uh, if anyone hasn't been in the uh, main part of the church, the two um, railings that are there are Jim's design and implementation. Um, he's helped me with projects at my house. I've helped him with projects at his house. Another thing I want to say about him is not just the mechanical part about Jim, but um, what I appreciate about him as a person and as a friend is that he knows how to keep his cool. I don't know that it's really a knows how to. I don't know if it's an intellectual kind of a thing that's happening there. I just think that's who Jim is. I'm smart, not smart enough to do that. <laughs> um, you know, most most of you over time have you know either socialized with or worked with or been a neighbor to or worshipped with somebody. And uh, to me, Jim stands out because in because I've been in a lot of different uh, situations with them, like projects and stuff like that. And, you know, when you do a project, sometimes you hit your thumb, sometimes you, um, you know, saw it yourself or <clears throat> whatever. He keeps it cool. And I really, really enjoy that about him. Um, and Thresh, I really hope you come up here and say a word or two at some point, because you worked for him. Um, one time, here's, here's one anecdote. He was making... Um, like a, a pen holder, that little round thing with pens in it right there, because I had asked him to make one for me, because I liked the looks of it. And he was trying to rush to do it before my birthday, and he cut his pinky bad, really, really oh, bad. Yeah. And um, I found out that that was happening. Lynn, I don't know if Lynn called me or Mason, one of you guys called me and said, okay. he's at the hospital. So I went to the hospital with them, because they were at the hospital too. And I would have expected, you know, 90% of the people left were going to go, I my poor finger, you know, it's gonna come off. I'm gonna lose my finger. He wasn't like that. He was telling jokes to the lady who was sewing up his finger. Oh. I'll, I'll finish that. He came upstairs holding his hand in a towel and said, honey, I think you should drive me to the hospital. I said, oh, why? And he opens his hand and it's almost to the bone. And I went, oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I had more reaction than he did. He was so calm. <laughs> Of um, other things, he is a Eagle Scout, and yesterday when we were pulling a, um, what do you call it, a re-rod out of the ground where, where Jim had made and constructed and put into the ground a, a, a peace pole that's outside, he had to get the old re-rod out. And so I said, oh, what we need here is we need a strap and a knot that won't come loose. And he goes, I've got one of those. <laughs> um, he's a leader at this church. And Henry, you know, you already said something about that. And I don't mind if you come up here later and, you know, talk also more about that. Um, and he likes to get to know God better, and I appreciate that about him, too. Um, when we carpooled, it wasn't just about, you know, what's traffic like. A lot of times we were listening to, you know, uh, Bible verses, or Bible um, podcasts. podcasts about um, Bible chapters and books, and, you know, listening to that for weeks and weeks and weeks in a row. I like that about him. I understand he's pretty good, at, I've seen he's pretty good at Euchre. <laughs> um, he used to binge on Mountain Dew, but he gave that up for his health. He's had three hip replacements, but it didn't stop him. He, after that, he took a job as a uh, step aerobics instructor at the Y. It wasn't a formal of that. Uh, when he had that little pedometer thing on his phone, he would get like, he would, he would go up against somebody at work named Raji, and she tried to beat him, but she never could because he had like 10,000 cents a day. Um, I also, <laughs> I consider myself a good biker. 
We went around uh, Belle Isle for a fundraiser that he did for the diabetes group, and I had a, you know, a moderate bike. He had a lousy bike, you know, that he was borrowing, and I couldn't keep up with it. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's got an F one hundred and fifty. He may next get a Maverick. Uh, he used to call his mother every day. What a good son. She likes NASCAR just like he does. <laughs> it's football, Kansas City. And the last thing I want to say, I'm hoping Jim will actually do this, is if anyone knows the Bell Tire commercial, <laughs> you know what I mean? This that guy that sounds like a caveman at the end who says, Bell Tire! Bell Tire! <laughs> Bell tire. <laughs> And when you would sing, what's your song, Bill? Um, rolling, 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 rolling. I would always come in. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and Bill would have to cover his ears. <laughs> and so I'm done. So if anyone wants to take the mic, I'm just going to lay it right here. Thank you, Bill. Do you want to say something? Do you want to say something?